The former High Court judge appointed to head the government's inquiry into child abuse has been urged to stand down because of a family connection. Her late brother is Sir Michael Havers, who was Attorney General in the 1980s, during the period when a cover-up of child abuse by politicians and senior establishment figures is alleged to have taken place. Meanwhile, a police officer who investigated paedophile activity at the time says he found numerous documents linking abuse to members of the establishment. Matt Proger reports. To interview you about your lifetime of sexual involvement with young boys. I'm not this is like Peter Wrighton, academic, well, childcare expert, and truth. exposed by the BBC 20 years ago as a paedophile. We have evidence that suggests that you have abused your position of power, that you have abused your position of trust, that you have betrayed colleagues. Before he died, he was convicted of importing child pornography. But a detective on that investigation says it also found evidence he was part of a powerful network of child abusers who corresponded with one another. There were several bags. There was, there was about four or five suitcases of material under the bed. Um, when we started to go through it, it, it was in probably, I would say, between four and six large bin liners equivalent of, of, of documentation and letters. And in amongst all the other documentation, there was a definite link to establishment figures. Uh, I can't say more than that at this point, but there was definitely a link to establishment figures, including senior members of the clergy. Today, a man who counts himself as one of Wrighton's victims spoke to the BBC. He was in care when he says he was passed from one abuser to another. When I was being taken to places where you, I knew things were bad things were going to happen, you'd think my I might see someone I recognise, I might be able to call out for help or, or say something. I never did. Um, you'd sort of wish you were somewhere else. You'd wish that someone would come and rescue you. Baroness Butler Sloss will now head a national inquiry into claims like these. But the choice has been criticised already, with some saying the retired judge is too close to the 1980s establishment that's under the spotlight. Um, in respect of Lady Butler Schloss, a very distinguished um, a, a person that has been appointed, is there any concerns that you had before the appointment was made that she was actually a member of the upper house? And some of the allegations may have been made about members of this house. Was that considered at all, despite the fact that she's extraordinarily distinguished and a very good head of the family division, that she is a member of parliament and she is very closely related to a former Lord Chancellor. Um, the, I mean, the short answer, Mr Chairman, is no. She's a woman of unimpeachable integrity. Um, she's a crossbench peer, of course, so uh, uh, is also uh, highly independent uh, in the House of Lords, and I think anyone who's ever dealt with her um, uh, can't, wouldn't question for a second uh, the integrity, capability, intelligence and rigour that she will bring to this. I agree government. with you, and I just put that to you. Now, first this morning, uh, her appointment was announced only yesterday, but there are already calls for Baroness Butler Sloss to resign as the chair of a wide-ranging inquiry into allegations of child abuse in public institutions. Her brother, Michael Havers, was uh, Attorney General at the time some of these allegations of child abuse were originally being made. That was back in the Thatcher government of the early 1980s. Campaigning Labour MP Simon Danchuk told correspondent uh, Norman Smith that she was the wrong person to lead the inquiry. I think she should consider a position. I find it quite surprising that neither she nor the government uh, realised that her relationship with her brother uh, was connected to Geoffrey Dickens and, and, and all this palaver around it. I mean, it begs belief that that hadn't been considered in the first place. The Home Office stressed, though, that she is a figure of unimpeachable integrity, has a formidable past record, and that supersedes any uh, family connection in the past. Yes, I understand that, but she also sits in the House of Lords. Uh, some of the people that may be accused of this type of abuse may sit in the House of Lords alongside her. That doesn't look good to the wider public. Well, that's the view of Mr. Damtrup, Labour MP, who's played a big part in bringing these historic child abuse allegations back into the public uh, domain. Uh, Elizabeth Truss, is it right for an independent inquiry into historic sexual abuse at Westminster and other parts of the establishment to be led by an 80-year-old stalwart of the establishment? Well, I think this is a decision that's been made by the Home Secretary, Theresa May. Mm. 
As has been pointed out in your video, she's a woman of unimpeachable integrity. She's a former High Court judge. She's got a lot of experience into looking into these issues. She's and I don't think age a member of the I don't think age should come into it. I think it's how good you are and whether you're capable of doing a good job. And I know she's done a lot of work in areas like human trafficking. She's extremely experienced. And the Home Secretary has made the judgment that she would be the best person to do the job. But when she sits uh, in the House of Lords, she's not sitting beside people behind the human trafficking. She could well be sitting beside people who, 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 for whom allegations have been made against her on sexual abuse from the 80s. Well, I don't think it's right to question her integrity as a former High Court judge. I think she's been chosen by the Home Secretary, someone who's right to do the job. She mm -hmm. will be ably assisted by a number of other people on the inquiry. They're going to have full access to all the files. I mean, Theresa May has made it absolutely clear that no stone will be unturned in this investigation. It is such a critical issue. It's so important to keep our children okay. safe. And I think um, questioning the integrity of uh, Baroness Butler's loss isn't the right way to start off this inquiry. I'm not sure anyone's questioning her integrity, but what's your position? I think that when people ask for independent inquiries, they quite often want a judge to lead it, because I think that they do, judges do come with a feeling of trust from the government and from, from the people. And I think they, she, is, she used to be in charge of the family division and she used to be in the, in the uh, Court of Appeal. And she's chaired a, a, a major child abuse inquiry in exactly. the past. Exactly. But, there, and there is a but. Her brother was Lord Havers. Her brother was, in, was Attorney General. Um, if you remember, in fact, Geoffrey Dickens gave two dossiers. He gave one to the Home Office and he gave the other one to the DPP, uh, two copies. Mm. And the DPP copy has also gone missing. And at the time, the, atten the DPP was answerable to the Attorney General. Now, I don't question this admirable, extraordinary woman's integrity. I agree with Liz on this. But I do think I'm surprised that the Home Office didn't look at this because I think they have put her in a really difficult position. Well, I think that she has been chosen by the Home Secretary. The Home Secretary will have looked at the various candidates available. I think, as Emily points out, she has a great deal of experience in this area. And somebody who has that long history of working in areas like family law is bound to have known some of the people involved. I mean, there is a, there is a large establishment. But as I say, I think she is absolutely committed to making sure this inquiry is conducted with integrity. I think there's a mood across politics and across government to once and for all open but up areas that previously have not been opened up. It doesn't worry you that her brother was the Attorney General at a key time when these allegations were originally made and nothing was done about them? Well, I think the point is the Home Secretary will have taken that into account when making her decision. She will that have might looked surprise at, some people. She will have looked at who was the best person to do the job. I know Elizabeth Butler Sloss. I think she's a woman of incredible ability and integrity. I'm sure that's why okay. she has been chosen by the Home Secretary. May, may I say one other thing, which is also it is said that Lord Havers tried to stop the naming of Peter Heyman in the House of Commons. It is indeed said. That. And I think you know, that is another issue. I, I mean, I don't think... Peter can... Heyman, of course, was a, it turned out to be a notorious uh, paedophile. But With it files was covered up bed. for years and years, and even when his uh, secret uh, flat in Notting Hill was discovered with uh, apparently horrible things in mm. it. Mm. Uh, he was only ticked off, as I understand. And letters, that. and letters from all oh, sorts of people from within people the establishment. people connected with this. Mm. Exactly. Okay. Lady um, Butler's loss is an enormously distinguished legal figure and a woman of great integrity, but I do question whether she is the right person to head up this very important inquiry. She is a, a really a pillar of the establishment that uh, will be seen as such by the people that I represent. The Baroness is the sister of Sir Michael Havers, the government's top lawyer in the 1980s. But his son says that's not an issue. She's completely independent of politics, especially at that period. My father was in the House of Commons. She wasn't. She's the most respected judge of her period. I think she's a transparently honest woman. And she wouldn't take, have taken up this, this job unless she thought she could do a really make, make, you know, make a fist of it and do it properly. Tonight, the NSPCC revealed that calls from the public had risen sharply as a result of recent publicity. And it now says the failure to report child abuse should in future be considered a crime. Matt Proger, BBC News.